We're sitting down with Peter Van Buren, a State Department Foreign Service officer who a few years ago headed an Iraqi reconstruction team. Then he came back home and wrote a book titled We Meant Well, How I Helped Lose the Battle for the Hearts and Minds of the Iraqi People. And now he says the State Department wants him fired because of the book. What What's in the book? that they don't like so much, Mr. Van Buren. When you throw pies at clowns, they sometimes get angry. The State Department is a lot like the mafia. You don't talk about the family outside the family. And the State Department was, I think, bothered by the fact that I told the true story of what happened in Iraq, which contradicts what they've been putting out through the media for almost eight years now. Tell me a little bit more about the projects that you were involved in as part of this uh, nation building uh, team uh, that sponsored by the United States. Why do you think those projects failed? Around 2007, a number of State Department people were sent to Iraq to spend a lot of money to rebuild the country and hopefully create a nation that was going to be our ally and friend and a happy spot in the Middle East. It didn't work out that way. Instead, what happened was that we were sent over there with almost unlimited funds, but no vision. We had lots of time and lots of people, but no one in charge. We lacked many things, including adult supervision. So instead of the long-term coordinated efforts that real development work requires, we got short-term efforts that were thrown together, not guided by any broader philosophy, and almost were, were required to fail. The very first thing that happened to me was I was presented by my teammates with a fraudulent receipt to sign. They had overspent $3,000 on snacks for a conference and wanted me to sign off on a, a receipt for printing to make it all right. They then tried to talk me into spending $25,000 to buy a few sheep to give away to a few widows and that was our, our, going to be our contribution to democracy and the war effort. The more that I was a fraud. It was as close sure. to, we were going to buy some sheep from a guy who was going to give them to his relatives who were going to and raise the them and put the rest in his pocket. Um, you could buy a Toyota for what we were going to pay for sheep in Iraq. The problem was that these were not isolated incidents. What I thought might have been just a really bad first day at work turned out to be evocative of the entire year. Our people... So there was like a systematic squandering of resources there? Absolutely. The, the squandering of resources occurred at very small levels, a thousand dollars, a couple of thousand dollars here and there, and zoomed all the way up into hundreds of millions of dollars that were spent on hospitals that never opened or prisons that never took any prisoners in. The United States lacked a plan. We were constantly being forced into short-term solutions. We were constantly being asked to produce publicity stills and have something ready by next Thursday for the photographers to show up. CNN is coming over the weekend, better get something ready. None of these things were part of the long-term, the slow work of development that really is necessary if you're serious about rebuilding a country. I want to read something to you. Please. Here is uh, some news I read. The government watchdogs who've raised the alarm about billions of dollars of war zone waste and fraud are falling silent or are missing in action. This news um, item is actually about the Commission on Wartime mm -hmm. uh, Contracting and the charter that they were uh, working under, it, it has expired and has not been renewed. Um, I'm just going to tell uh, our viewers that this Commission on Wartime Contracting claimed waste and fraud may have siphoned off up to $60 billion from contracts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, this watchdog could be out of business. Are you surprised? Uh, who might be interested in, in it? I'm actually ashamed that the Commission on Wartime Contracting is going out of business. And there's actually more to it than even the story that you just shared with your viewers. First of all, the State Department has attempted to exempt itself from the scrutiny of the committee that you refer to. The State Department has claimed that it was not part of wartime contracting, that it was involved in diplomacy and therefore not controlled by that organization, and they didn't want them to peek into what the State Department was doing. Even worse, the committee, as it's dissolved, has sealed all of its records, and no one will be allowed to see any of the results of its work, except what's already been published, until 2031. So the things that the Committee on Wartime Contracting uncovered, the incredible amounts of waste, fraud, and mismanagement that they documented in the limited public documents that they did produce, all of that is being swept away. I don't know how old I'm going to be in 2031. I'm going to be a lot older than I am now, but it's shameful 
shameful that we will not be able to see that information. Why until... aren't they allowed to publish that before? The official version is that there may be classified information in some of their reports that needs to remain uh, undercover for that long. I think most intelligent people realize that the reporting from the committee is so horrific it needs to be put away to avoid embarrassing the government even further. The, the U.S. government says we brought freedom and democracy to Iraq. It doesn't matter on what grounds we landed there, true or false. They proved to be uh, false, but um, anyways, we got rid of a terrible man in power and we're building a democratic society there. That's the argument. You were out there in the field. What is the reality on the ground as you saw it? First of all, I don't think you can dismiss so casually the causes that sent America to war in Iraq. We entered the Iraq war under the guise of looking for weapons of mass destruction when we didn't find any, as if there ever were any. We then changed it to the new medium, which is, oh, we got rid of Saddam, he was a terrible man and brought freedom to Iraq. Saddam was not a nice guy. I'm not here to defend him. No one could possibly defend his actions. However, we killed over 100,000 Iraqi citizens. Some of them were killed directly by the United States. Some of them were killed in the sectarian violence that we set loose in the aftermath of our invasion. Iraq today remains in the bottom percentages of any statistic the UN cares to count. Access to water, access to medical care, access to education. Iraq is not a place that represents the investment of $63 billion in reconstruction funds. Iraq has had a number of elections, but it doesn't have a democracy. Press reports are constantly reporting secret prisons, militias, targeted killings, government killings, soldiers, people in military uniforms committing assassinations, bombs going off. None of those things are indicative of democracy. I think if that's what freedom represents, most Iraqis are not very comfortable with it. And I think the United States failed in its efforts to bring freedom to Iraq. There's one thing that very few in Washington admit, uh, and that is, uh, that is defeat. Um, actually, they're talking about uh, whether or not it was immoral to invade uh, Iraq, but not quite about defeat. And what, what you're writing in this book is like a raw material of failure. Do you really see it as such, as a defeat? Absolutely. I actually, title, the title of the book actually includes the, uh, the, the catchphrase, I helped lose this war. And I accept my responsibility for not doing better than I should have. Mr. Van Buren, most Americans really don't understand why their government continues spending so much money in Iraq. They were told about the withdrawals by next year. Uh, now they hear that Washington is maneuvering to stay there beyond that uh, deadline. What's your feeling? Why does Washington want to stay in Iraq? Who benefits from it? I myself am not sure why the United States has spent and continues to spend so much money in Iraq. I think one of the old sayings, when you're in a hole, the first thing you need to do is stop digging, does apply. The United States has said but that... But someone benefits from it. Someone does not, benefit. Not the Iraqi people. They made it clear that they don't, uh, you know, they, but, they, but do they have a say when their government gets all that money from the U.S. and essentially does... No, I don't US think wants. any of the money is going to the Iraqi people. I think a lot of the money... Their government. ...is going to government leaders. I think a lot of the money just disappears. No one knows where billions of dollars actually, physically, actually went. However, it is interesting to note that Iraq is planning to buy a lot of weapons from the United States. Iraq is hoping to buy a number of F-16s. They already have bought and will continue to buy M1 tanks from us. All of these are very expensive toys and more importantly come with very long tails. Each of these tanks requires maintenance, requires spare parts, requires extra equipment, and requires trainers and mechanics. It's not like buying a car where you buy... Do you think the State Department pushes those contracts? Oh, I know for a fact that we do. It's one of the duties of the State Department is to help sell American products overseas, and we work very closely in a number of countries around the world with the military in order to sell American weapons. That's not a, uh, a secret, and it's not unique to Iraq in any way whatsoever. Foreign military sales represent a significant duty of the military in conjunction with the State Department overseas. What is difficult about Iraq is that this is a country that doesn't seem in a position to afford these type of things. Iraq is a country where people don't have access to water, don't have access to medical care, don't have access to electricity, 
And instead of spending on those things, their government is buying weapons and indebting itself to the United States for years to come. Something seems wrong there. Now I understand what, why the State Department wants you fired. But thank you very much for this interview. Thank, thank you. you very much.